He shot me three times with um, a 45 caliber and then put the gun in his mouth and killed himself. Our then six-year-old daughter ran down the hallway, found my cell phone, stepped over her father's body and brought me the cell phone to call 911. It's been eight years since Stephanie Bond was rushed to a hospital near her home in Illinois, fighting for her life. I had one third of my blood left in my body when I went into surgery. She says physically recovery was tough, but mentally it was worse. It's continually hard for me to come to grips with the fact that the man that I thought I would share the rest of my life with, the man that I had four children with, that I was with, married to for nearly 22 years, tried to murder me. He had been suffering from some serious mental health issues, mainly anxiety, depression, and some personality disorders. And it had gotten to a point where something was going to break. You know, one out of five Americans have a mental health problem. And depression is the world's largest disability cause. Lee Richardson is the founder and clinical director of the Brain Performance Center. She says watching the surroundings and behavior of the person is key. Has her medication changed? Has her sleep cycle changed? What about their nutrition? Are they going days without eating anything? How are they interacting with their friends? Are they socially withdrawing? How, are, how is their world changing? Well, it may seem hard to do in the moment, Stephanie says, after the fact, sometimes you just need to push forward. You constantly question, what could you have done differently? Should you have done differently? Should I have left the marriage earlier? Should I have stayed? And at some point you have to have peace with, you, I did the best I could in the situation at that time. If you feel that something is dangerous, there is something, there's some pivotal shift that sixth sense, that instinct, pay attention to it. Ask for help. If you're a very spiritual person, go to your church. Ask your pastor for help. If you're a very cognitive person, go to a counselor. Go to, you know, there's mentalhealthamerica.net. With our children, try to help them understand what the impact is going to be. Sit down with your, your children or your family and say, so how do you feel about that? And then listen. Stephanie says at the end of the day, patience and self-love is one of the most important lessons she's learned. I didn't cause it. I didn't do it. Um, this isn't about me, that kind of thing. So whatever affirmations, just tell yourself that all the time. At one point, I knew that I had to set an example for my kids. My advice would be you have to give yourself grace. Stephanie says to try to talk to the therapist who's speaking with your loved one as well so they can see your perspective of what's going on inside of the home. Lee says to know that you're not alone and talking about mental health is okay. To find out more information, you can visit her website, thebrainperformancecenter.com. For Real News, I'm Sarah Strackhouse.